Hello. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. Instead of a funny sketch at the beginning of the video, we've decided we're gonna add some stakes because James has actually put a deposit down on one of these cars. How much was the deposit again? Oh, uh, 10 grand in the end. 10 grand, 10 grand okay. Yeah. And so by the end of the video, James is going to decide whether or not he's actually gonna follow through and take delivery. Of a Lotus Amira. But it was refundable, so the deposit was refundable. No, it's not. You have build date, right? Only technically. Oh, no, only literally. You, you're not getting that 10 grand back, my friend. Nah. <laughs> Stupid. Well, good thing I used the company credit card then. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And this is the Lotus Emira. And yes, about a year ago, I placed an order for one. And that's not something I do often. In fact, the last impractical fun car I bought was an MX-5 in 2017. James, what's an impractical fun car? Oh, you wanted to say the last sports car you bought, didn't you? But you had to say impractical fun car because you were worried people would say the Miata isn't a sports car? Uh, no. Yes. Anyway, stunned by its beauty, I thought that if this Amira is even 90% of the drive of the Evora GT we had just tested, with all the added refinement that it promised and that new look, well, then I was in. The Amira teased all the right sports car ingredients and even fully spec'd, it has a price tag of under 100 grand US. That doesn't mean that 95 grand or 120 Canadian isn't an awful lot of money though. And ever since James placed the order, he's been a mess. Humming and hawing and going back and forth. It feels silly, he says. It feels irresponsible. What more can it provide in Toronto than an MX-5? What does it have over a Cayman that means he can ignore its lots of trouble, usually serious reputation? Needless to say, he's been nervous about testing this thing. But alas, that day has come. It's time to find out if the Amira is worthy. And while today we are just driving a test car, we decided we would sit down and take a close look at the spec that James has chosen for his. Er, ours now, I guess. And if you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing about. So subscribe, hit the bell, all right, Thomas, this is not a Cayman, okay? There's not no. 50 million options. There's right. only a few things you can choose which have lost sleep over each one. <laughs> and the first decision is a supercharged V6 or a turbocharged i4. That's gotta be pretty easy. Yep. <laughs> I've chosen the same engine that's in this vehicle, the supercharged V6. It's a Camry V6 with a Lotus supercharger on it. It's good for 400 horsepower. Now credit to the AMG four-cylinder, that can do 360 horsepower from a four-cylinder. But for me, for a sports car, I don't want a turbocharged car. I love a naturally aspirated car, and the only thing that comes second to that with a very close second is a supercharged one. Aggressive. It feels naturally aspirated, but just assisted. In this form, the Amira is good for 0 to 60 in just over four seconds. That's plenty quick enough for me. It's not C8 Stingray quick, but my God, does it sound good. I've got 
plenty of intake noise coming from the engine behind me. And then on the overrun, it burbles and crackles. Now, people have complained that this doesn't quite rev high enough because when you do look at a Cayman GTS 4 litre, that thing revs to 8,000 RPM, and I totally get that. That's monstrous. But this revs to 6,800. If I remember correctly, the Evora revs to 6,600 in tour and 7,000 in sport. But this 6,800 lasts plenty long enough for me especially around these canyons. What a lovely power plant. I kind of wish it, it banged off the rev limiter rather than shutting down the power the way it does. But I like the short gearing, you're constantly shifting gears in this. But that's in part to the other decision that I've made. All right, so that's the engine. Yeah. The next decision that it gives you on the website is transmission. Which one did you choose, James? Yes. This is the six-speed manual transmission. And because of the short gearing, I'm constantly engaging with this car. It is absolutely a driver's car. It says it in a very cringy way on the key, but it is actually true. The shifts are so purposeful and mechanical. You've got to give it some, which I kind of like. I find that in the Cayman GTS and some other cars, it's a little bit too assisted. And you can even see through the mesh in the console, the mechanism. How rewarding is that? And that's not the only mechanism you can see. As I apply throttle in my rear view, it's just, Lotus understands something. They don't understand like dealer networks and delay times and suddenly increased prices in England, but man, do they know how to build a sports car. The clutch is lighter than I remember the Evora being. We got stuck in some pretty bad traffic in the Evora and I remember Thomas complaining of a sore foot. This, oh, great downshifts. This you could daily, you could drive this across the country. It's an incredibly livable manual transmission. Where the livability is potentially threatened is the other choice I've made. Okay, so this next one is a, is a really, really big one, all mm -hmm. right? On the Amira, you can only have passive dampers. Okay. So for suspension choices, you either get the touring from factory or you get the sport from factory. Right. Which is harsher riding. Okay. And I've been on the forums, I've been on the Facebook groups, Everyone is dying over this choice. Okay. So. Which did you do? I did sports. So James opted for sport suspension. I mean, if you can do sport suspension, always do sport suspension, right? Wrong. Sometimes sports suspension is unlivable, painful, pointless. But you know what? This car with sports suspension, like the one that we, we, not he, we apparently, have optioned, is great. The ride is actually supple. It's very much like the Evora, actually. I don't remember the Evora being stiff, too stiff at any point, and this isn't either. The ride is good, and I'm in a Lotus, and I'm in a canyon. This is pretty much driving Nirvana. just darts in. Steering is quick and talkative. True, proper, genuine feedback. Hydraulic steering rack. I don't actually think it's quite as good as the Evora, or at least what I remember the Evora being, but 
it's pretty much better than every Porsche. Look at the car, it just it moves around and it talks to you. Over every little bump and undulation, something happens in the steering. You feel the suspension compression. You feel the load in the tires. And there's a lot of load you can put in the tires because this is on cup twos. But yeah, oh, proper G-forces. A little bit of mid-engine action there on the way out. Brilliant driving car. This is where Miata meets Porsche. Right here. I would take this experience over pretty much every supercar I've ever driven. Manual transmission, small light chassis, talkative steering, mid-engine, Lotus weight. Yeah, give me more please. Just do this all day long. One more sweep, one more crest, one more corner. <sighs> okay, <laughs> driving section over. Let's get to what is probably your favorite part, I'm guessing. Yeah, well, no. Only because only you're obsessed with colors. Yeah. How long did you think about the colors in this car? Three Before. seconds. <laughs> Three seconds. No, yes. When choosing a first edition, you only have a choice of seven colors. Okay. Six. Six. Six colors. Yeah. And... Actually, the, sorry, why don't, The car's right there. Why don't we just go talk about it in front of the Lotus? Oh, uh, yeah. All okay. Right. So, All right, so this is dark verdant. Dark... what? Dark green. Dark green. Got it. It's pretty. Yes, it's very pretty. People want a green Lotus. I, a lot of people want a green Lotus. They think it's... Yeah, well, you know, British Racing Green and the, you know, the whole thing. But this thing. is dark. This is not British Racing Green. No, it's this not. Is... Well, it's like a flake, metal flake, too. But when the sun doesn't touch it, it looks black. It is very dark on that side, but when the sun's hitting it, it's really nice, actually. It's, it's lovely, pretty. yeah. And you have the choice of a lower black pack, which this one has, okay. and an upper black pack, which is... the, this the whole, No, the whole roof becomes black. This is green. Oh, it's so See? dark. It's so it's dark so out dark. of the sun, you can't even tell. So what color did you choose, James? Seneca Blue. No kidding. James chose a blue car. We drove <laughs> We drove a Ferrari F8. I guess I also chose a blue car now yeah. that I'm part of this. Exactly. We, <laughs> the, we drove the Ferrari 8 F8 blue with the black roof. Yes. We drove the Maserati MC20 blue with the black roof. That's true, yeah. And we put them on top of the mountain and I went, yep. In fact, a little bit of backstory which we didn't mention at the beginning was the reason I, we ended up, I ended up ordering an Amira. We are, ended up ordering an Amira. We involuntarily, was because we had an argument on the top of a mountain. We did? Yeah, we were standing next to the Maserati MC20. Okay. And I wasn't a huge fan of it. And Thomas really loved it. I, lo I was. I but it cost a fortune. I'm going to say yes. 300 grand, give or take. Yeah. And I turned to Thomas and I passionately said, that's ridiculous because the Emir is going to come along, look just as good as that in blue with a black roof, for a third of the price. And have a manual transmission. With a manual transmission. And he said, you know what you gotta do, don't you? And I was like, yep, yeah. but secretly I was thinking, you know what we gotta do. <laughs> so I chose blue with a black roof, with a manual transmission, and it cost a third of the price of an MC20. It did, yes. However, I've since seen a lot of delivery photos. Yeah. And the Magma Red with the black roof. That looks like a Ferrari. It, it, the is car that makes, bad? No, it's not, but it's not a Ferrari though, is it? It's, it's a Lotus. I almost don't want it to look like a Ferrari. Yes. Okay, because when you look at this car, mm -hmm. it, it completely looks like an Italian supercar. Yes, until someone on the forum says that the front looks like Voldemort's nose and then it ruins the whole thing. Wait, what, what do you mean? <laughs> These little inserts. <laughs> it looks like Voldemort. Um, well, he Avada Kedavra! <laughs> yeah, and that's the, that's the verdict. I couldn't get Avada okay. Kedavra green. So. You couldn't get Avada Kedavra green? No. Um, but there's, there's been a bit of cheekiness on Lotus's side. Um, First of all, on the website, this thing is completely slammed. And every single press photo, even the press car they had, yeah. like rolling around, yeah, yeah. was slammed on the wheels. I'm so glad you got to experience the whole lovely buying process with our money. He's like, oh, I'll do the press photos and the forums. Wait, and we the haven't thing. spent it yet. <laughs> we haven't spent it yet. You have uh, spent the 10,000. Yeah, yeah, 10 grand's gone, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> so we get to choose. Oh well, also, prices on this car are strange, right? Because there's been people have tried to put the first editions up for sale on the bidding sites and stuff yes. and they're not actually going for more some of them aren't even hitting reserve on the msrp okay so basically i done <laughs> up aa1 <laughs> <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so we might actually be better. Anyway, um, Can so we just yeah. talk about this as a car. Like, I, like proportions, look, styling, wheels, everything is beautiful. Beautiful. They absolutely nailed the way yes. that this thing looks. It's, this, I mean, this looks like a baby supercar. It looks like the it McLaren. It looks like a supercar, actually. It's it like barely smaller than a full-size supercar. But I think if you put it next to something, like, because it looks exactly like a McLaren Altura, even down to this. Yes, that vent, that very vent, McLaren, yeah. yeah. But I think if you put them next to each other, you'd start to see the difference. Okay. But yeah, it really, really, really looks like a supercar. No, it's, um, it is stunning in real life. It's it wide, it's low. It the wide special. bit is a bit cheeky because it's kind of like stuck on. Like open the door. What do you mean? The, 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 the fact that it's wide is kind of just like Oh, a, I see, yes. It's a little bit, yeah. Arrow, arrow, intakes. Intakes and arrow. Arrow, yeah, yeah. arrow is for arrow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's what, that's what you want. You want light panels on the outside and a small, strong chassis. But you can see the V6 through there. That is very which cool. Which is more than I can say for the 296 Ferrari that we have. Yeah, they actually let you see this, yeah. yeah. Oh, and how big is the trunk, actually? Because I've never seen it. Is there a frunk? No, you can't open that, because there's oh. like a radiator okay. or something in All there. Right. That's unfortunate. The trunk oh. is the same size as the Evora trunk, which is not, not big. You could fit 1.5 carry-on suitcases in there. <laughs> it's a small car for small belongings. For small belongings and small people. Um, shall we look at the interior? Yeah. Okay. Right, last stuff on the spec that, yes. w that we've chosen. That we've, um, that we've chosen. Yeah. Just so we can talk about the interior, is I basically did the marketing spec, which really upset me, and I sent a message to Lotus saying, you guys suck, because I would have... <laughs> I would have chosen that spec anyway. Okay. So I've got the yellow brake calipers. Okay. Um, I got the diamond cut wheels. Okay. Um, which look fantastic. So I don't usually like diamond cut wheels, no, but they look good in this. They will look good for it. You'll like it because it's ours. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then the interior, uh, same as this Alcantara, but instead I think I did a yellow stitch, which offsets. A yellow stitch. Yeah, it works really well with the blue. Okay. I've okay. spec'd many a Cayman exactly the same way. Right. So. And never pulled the trigger. Never pulled the trigger. With our money. Um, yes. So. I really like the interior of this car, visually and like in terms of like design. Like you've got you got some manual climate control stuff going on. Oh, here. it feels got, like a modern car. I got a manual like volume knob. This is fast enough. It's not lightning fast to no, use. No, it's not lightning fast. Right, but it's got Apple CarPlay and it's all there, right? But this is this is the uh, first edition. So we have a few comforts that aren't you have to normally option on the non first edition. Right. So okay. All the first cars are first edition. So yes. ours will be a first edition, eh? Uh, um, so we've got the Kef upgraded audio, which we just tested and is very good. It's actually, very good. Thankfully, yeah. in normally our car. manufacturers just sh audio manufacturers shove like uh, their name on a car. Right. Like how many cars have bows now? And it just it's so different. Oh, it, does, it doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah there's like so give this me money. Is good. We've got Alcantara headliner, um, which room, is room for a helmet, I'd say. Yeah. Very yeah, important. Yeah. You're not racing on a car. <laughs> it's okay. We can make choices. Um, uh, okay. So here's here's the, the foibles I have with this interior. The because it has to be. It's so much of an upgrade on the Evora, right? Oh yeah. Um, so much. But there's some dumb stuff. Like, okay. What is that? Okay. So I wouldn't mind this if. It stayed up. Yeah, you can't one hand it. You you can. You just you fight with it to get your hand underneath it with one. It is very stupid. It just it just straight out of a Lambo and. It's worse. also tacky. Like I wonder. It's tacky. Like, yeah, like just remove it and just give me. You know I what I mean? Think, I don't think you can remove it without it being like a hinge. I think I think I'd want the start stop button to be red. Why not? Give me a splash that would of be color. More fun. Right? Yeah. And glowing. Yeah. But Steering I love wheel. I love that you can see the shifter through. Oh the, through oh, the so good. We, it's just, also, this just feels great, doesn't it? <laughs> Storage is not huge, you know. It's, you don't need to store things. You've got this little thing here where you can, there. you can put your, your pipe. <laughs> and that's about it's it. It's enough for four playing cards. Yeah, um, but, that, you know, this is nice. It's simple. I really like this. Pe well. People have, have been uh, upset about the steering wheel because it goes quite wide here, right? Yeah, I don't, I'm used to BMW M steering wheels, which are, like, really chonk. Yeah, but they're not the standard. They're too thick. This is about as thick as an... M2 wheel. In that bit there. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I just drive like this everywhere. <laughs> it's this perfect width mm. up there. Yeah. Uh, gauge cluster is, you know, basically I'll say I'd, I'm not even need to comment on it. It's good enough. It's just good enough. It just yeah. it has, gives me what I need. <sighs> Seats are comfortable as well, which is nice. I, I kind of wish there was a bit more support. Like left, like left to right. There's not. They're not as bolsters as they not could bolsters be. Bolsters they could be. Okay. But maybe they're saving that for whatever comes next. The Amira GT or right. uh, whatever it's going to be called. But I don't. You know what? It, this is like. It is an everyday sports car, right? It's not a track car. So no. I don't really want much more bolstering than this. No, yeah, in time, as they add the more aggressive additions, this will come, this will kind of end up being like the base Amira in, right. in a way. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But knowing Lotus, they'll just like tweak it for another 10 or 20 horsepower. 
but the driving position is great. The pedal spacing is is exactly what I want, right? I, I ergonomically, this is a fantastic interior. Everything is right where it should be, and the materials are nice. Yeah. They really are. And look, when you change the air conditioning, the person has is a, a race car driver. Has a helmet. <laughs> Uh, so they, I guess they couldn't do that and not have room for a helmet. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know what? I think this car is an absolute win. Yeah, for someone that would actually follow through on the purchase. So, am I going to buy one? Well, let's look at it. Yes, this is a better looking Evora, which was an already amazing driver's car, and it now has a nicer interior. Well done, Lotus. It's more connected than any of the fifty dollars to $70,000 range sports cars. It's more playful than Caymans and 911s, and its size makes it more approachable than something like a C8 Corvette. Really, the lack of an overly exotic power plant is the only thing that stops the Amira graduating to supercar status. Although, to its credit, during this filming day, Thomas and I remarked often that the engine is no less titillating than the Cayman GTS's 4-litre flat 6, a high compliment. The Emira is practically challenged though. Compared to the Cayman's magical frunk plus trunk combo, the Emira answers the question cargo space with no, cargo road, and go road it does. It is genuinely one of the best pure sports cars in the world right now. So practicality be damned, as a pure sports car, I think I would take this over almost any Porsche. I would take it over a C8 Stingray. I would take it over a Supra, an Alpha 4C, an F-Type, a Nissan Z, an NSX, an R8 even. Simply put, if you have $100,000 to spend on a sports car, this should be at the top of your list. However, our list is a bit unique. And since placing the order a year ago, things have changed, we've wondered what else Throttle House can do with a mirror money. Like, it would be expensive, but we could organise the first Throttle House road trip series where we buy a car each and go on a massive adventure. James, we are doing that. We are? Yes, we just haven't told the audience yet. Oh, right. Whoops. Mm, oh, and if we can't get our $10,000 back, expect to see a We Bought a Lotus Amira video on the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>